The coffin is too big for the whole, is regarded as a monodrama, even though it is quite often performed by more than one actor. What is at issue is not whether the play is often performed by more than one actor in actual performance, but how its performance is indicated in the script, which specifies performance by a single actor narrator. When looked at from this angle, then the play is clearly a monodrama. The monodrama is quite a distinctive genre. Among its prominent features are the stage settings are usually less elaborate than on other dramatic works. They may even be minimalist, which is the case in Kuo's play, but as we'll see later, this is not the case with Korn's Emily of Emerald Hill. We have noted minimalism as a feature of Kuo's dramaturgy, and the monodrama that he has written is well suited for this. Much of the narrative is not actually enacted on the stage, but conveyed through language by the narrator, who is also the main character of the work. The main character is thus an intermediary who conveys the story to the audience or reader through recollection and commentary. One consequence of the presence of a narrator who is usually absent in a dramatic work is that it brings the work closer to prose fiction. The main character tells the story to us through a monologue in a monodrama. But in relation to this, there are some questions that we might want to ask. Is the monologue actually spoken out in language? Or what appears as a spoken monologue on stage is it actually the manifestation of a thought process? Language is expediently used to convey the thought process of the character here, as thought processes cannot be conveyed directly. Or could what appears as speech on stage actually be a mixture of thought and language? Another question about the monologue in a monodrama does it occur in the fictional universe? If it does, how come the direct addressees, the readers and audience that the main character speaks to, are in the real world? How does someone in the fictional world directly talk to someone in the real world? The trick here, of course, is to ensure that the speech is a monologue so that the audience or the reader cannot reply thus ensuring that the impossible dialogue between denizens of the fictional universe and the real world cannot take place. Is the monologue then merely an artificial device to let the story be told, but has not occurred or cannot occur in either the fictional universe or the real world? You'll encounter the same philosophical problem that you find here in the other monodrama that we are doing, Emily of Emerald Hill.